Smith. Richie. Coming beyond Walker. Pugh. Pugh! That'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football club. Hello Cherries fans and welcome to the second look here on this Monday evening where we dissect Saturday lunchtime's 3-2 defeat at the hands of Luton Town. It was a last minute goal from the Hatters that secured the points at Kenilworth Road and it was a sickener to say the least. Quick message before we begin though to say thank you as ever for your support for the channel as we pass another milestone on YouTube as ever. The numbers are great and all that, but it's nothing we like to talk about too much on here because it's the feedback and bumping into you at the pubs and at the grounds that really give us the most satisfaction. So with that in mind, if you feel as though there's anything that we could do better or you'd like things to change or you'd like to take part yourself, just let us know. We've got a feedback form at afcbpodcast.com slash feedback. And we'd love to hear from you. The whole point of Back of the Net is that it's a fans channel. So it's not just myself, Tom, Jeff, Neil, Tiggs, etc. But it's your channel as well. So we've got free-for-alls after every game. We'd love to see some new faces. We did after Luton, which was great. But also our breakfast shows as well. They give you a chance to take part as well. So, yeah, we welcome any ideas and criticism and all of that good stuff. One of the criticisms probably to stop me swearing in the vlogs, which I get. But uh, pop them in the comments below if you want or do it uh, anonymously at afcbpodcast.com forward slash feedback. And we'll read through them all to carry on improving as hopefully we back the boys to stay in the top two with our last 20 games. Come on, lads, you can do it. So a reminder then of what happened on Saturday lunchtime. <laughs> Comedy of errors, mate. Oh, was it actually a choice of save that it went in? Was it a Kenny goal? Was it a Kenny error? No. Well, I'm From long distance, and look, there's nothing you can complain about there. On the edge of the box, shot with his right foot, absolutely powered it past Travers, no chance. was it not great so to talk about it we got tom jordan here tom you're right yeah not bad we scored a hatful last week hat trick from our condes but this time around we just got to take our hat off to the has love it and also we've got jeff hayward here as well jeff how you doing i was feeling really optimistic but after saturday shattered 
shattered. And look, Tom, it's the 17th of January. It's it's Blue Monday today. So I think it's the culmination of things. It's the start of a working week. People who've had their pre-Christmas payday are running out of money. Credit card bills are due. Half a month to go until February. Dark, cold winter nights. And to top it off, Bournemouth got beaten by Inferiority Complex FC at Kenilworth Road. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for cheering me up there, Sam. That was um, yeah. that was really nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I will give I'll give Luton a little hat off for uh, the uh, the free beers as well, because like you say, money running out and and all that. But yeah, it was a it was a horrible one, and um, like we we thought we turned the corner a little bit, didn't we? So it was a uh, it was probably I expected us to perform better on the day. So yeah, really disappointing. But as I say, Luton probably earned it. Mm, Jeff, you recovered yet? Yeah, I thought Luton deserved the three points. Uh, we gave ourselves a mountain to climb. What was annoying was that we got so close to climbing it and at least escaping from that performance with a point and then last kick of the game is kind of a sickener, really. But, um, yeah, uh, I thought uh, Luton deserved the three points. Here's the league table, then, as it stands, Tom. And, you know, Fulham won again. They were 1-0 down. We were all hoping in the pub just after the game that maybe... Someone could do a favour. They didn't. Bristol City, I think they were playing, ended up winning 6-2. Blackburn Rovers won. They had 10 men. That was against Cardiff. And we are now second only on goals scored. The goal difference there, look, we got four better than them. But uh, concerning times after performances like that, especially in that first half. Yeah, it's a worrying trend at the moment. Yeah, and the, and the first half just, yeah, culminated that really, just that we we seem very safe, very conservative, and we're not letting the hand break off. And that's exactly what Fulham seem to be doing. And I'm certainly more looking over my shoulder at Blackburn and even QPR more than I am Fulham at the moment. Um, and as I say, we, we look like we turned a bit of a corner last couple, um, obviously the cup game as well. But yeah, we weren't on it. We It's... It's worrying that we miss a couple of players and good players at that in, say, Billing and Zamora. And it, it affects the whole team, the whole way we function. And and that was a real concern for me. And it's happened on more than one occasion now. So, Scotty Parker's going to have, to have a week. He's going to have to look at it and try and work some stuff out because it's um, not been great to watch of late. The fixtures after Christmas, we were looking at, I mean, Queen's Park Rangers, I don't think many of us expected that much, Jeff. But then we were looking at Cardiff hoping for a home win. We got one. We were looking at Peterborough. That one, of course, was postponed. But you look at some of the fixtures that are coming ahead and they're winnable games. And this was one of them as well. And look, the onus is on these games based on that horrible lot of fixtures that we've got in April there. I mean, it's not particularly good. Yes, we've got Bristol City at home, but We've got West Brom away, Sheffield United away, Middlesbrough aren't going to be easy, where Coventry have been doing so well, and then Fulham and Blackburn. What a torrid month. So we need to get the points in the bag now. And when you see us starting matches like we did, it's just it's just depressing to watch, isn't it? It is. We have to find that balance right between composure and intensity. And I understand that we want to play a, a game where we control the ball, we pass the ball, we we stop the opposition getting the ball because that's going to stop them scoring. But at the same time, that doesn't mean we ease up or play too slowly or invite them onto us in a way that gives them encouragement and momentum. And that first half in particular, everything was so slow and mm. and whenever we did try and play out from the back, their press was very good and mm. we, we made mistakes. We're not Barcelona passing the ball. We are AFC Bournemouth. We're not quite at the level to destroy teams passing out from the back. And it showed, you know, we invited them on. I thought they got their tactics absolutely spot on. And should we be surprised that we're going to come up against a well-motivated team like that in the Championship? Absolutely not. Every team's going to feel they can get points of us like that. You mentioned Barcelona. It felt like they were prime Barcelona, but I think that we made them look like that at times with our... We were very ponderous, I thought. And it was almost like we were in the Yeovil mindset that we thought we could have time and space on the ball. But, you know, a number of key moments, you only have to watch that eight and a half minutes on AFCB TV with the extended highlights. And there are so many times where players aren't 
you know, going to the ball when they're past it, they're slow to react. And Luton were pressing hard. And I made a comment that was picked up on the vlog by a number of people in the comments on, on YouTube about it being like an FA Cup match for them. And I wasn't trying to be condescending in terms of David versus Goliath, but they were properly up for it. And and we just weren't at all. And Luton, they're, they're a side that... I think even their own fans will probably admit this. Sometimes they look like world beaters and other times they look like a pub side. And it seems to be um, on the majority of times that we play them, they look a very, very decent side. And look, the team that we started out with, Tom, I'll put it on screen there. Obviously, we had the omission of Philip Billing. We thought maybe one of our our new guys might have come in defensively. However, it wasn't so. Mark Hondes, was uh, utilised instead of, of course, Philip Billing. And then uh, Jefferson Lerma and also Lewis Cook were the other two midfielders as part of that three there. But on the whole, when you saw that team line up at half 11, how are you feeling? I suppose, you know, not too bad given the hat trick the previous week. Yeah, I thought I was, it was kind of as I expected. I wasn't sure about Billing. I remember us us chatting and saying that he, he isn't in any of the training photos and I wonder if, like you say, with Mark Onda scoring a hat trick, it might be an opportunity for him to to get a chance from the off. So yeah, I always want Billing available, really. But I, I felt Mark Onda has earned that. And everywhere else on the pitch was kind of as I expected. We know we're without Zamora at the moment, so Leif Davis comes in, and and everywhere everywhere else was kind of as I expected and anticipated. So yeah, I felt we had enough, and they had uh, Harry Cornick out, didn't they? So mm. it's been good for them. So yeah, I thought on paper there was I thought yeah we can get the job done today if we perform. Sadly, we didn't. But um, yeah, it was it was a it was a team I I was happy with definitely. We were creating some chances, Jeff, but they were few and far between. I remember Jay Nansney yeah. a long raking ball to the on running Ryan Christie on the right hand side, and he sort of side footed it towards the, uh, the goal, made the keeper save. I think it was a a relatively easy save. Mark Hondes had a had a free kick that went straight down the keeper's throat. But really, our you know our chances weren't particularly great and our intensity wasn't great either I found no it wasn't Dom barely got on the ball at all in the game in fact even in mm. the second half when we we came back into it I, he was he was invisible for much of the game and I think what was what was interesting was the 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 different flanks and normally it's been the left hand side that's been great for us this season mm. And the right-hand side that's been a little bit mm, in and out, where whereas I thought Stacey and Christie combined pretty well for the for the game. Um, it looks like Leif Davis and Jaden Anthony, one, have never met each other, two, barely play together or train together, and three, do they even like each other? Because the number of times Leif Davis goes on overlaps and gets totally ignored by Jaden Anthony, I mean, it's it's just like... They're playing as individuals and, and not combining at all. And that that really imbalances our attack. Sometimes I can understand that when you've got a decoy run and you think you've got the better option. But yeah, the fact that you rarely used him at all. Yeah, maybe maybe speaks volumes there. And look, Jack Stacey did get a little bit of joy on that right-hand side, didn't he, in the first half? Uh, I thought, you know, technically... He wasn't quite there, but we did have some attacking impetus. But Luton were just really, really rigid in defence. And they were finding these little pockets of space, I found, Tom, um, throughout most of the first half. And they, I don't know, it just didn't feel right, did it? No, we, we looked like we were in control at times. And I was going to mention exactly what Jeff said as well about Anthony and Davis, that he just Davis made some good runs at times and Anthony never, had never used him. Um, but yeah, we, look, we looked OK. We, I thought, right, we're in control of it. But every transition, I felt that they looked like they could score. They looked dangerous every time, you know, our move broke down. Uh, the midfield weren't great. And I thought Kale and, and Kelly were getting bullied by that front two at times. Mm. Um, Adebayo, I think his name is, and, and Cameron Jerome, obviously an old school striker. And I thought they they really mixed up with them and made it difficult. Um, I agree that I thought Stacey, obviously, will come on to, to the goals. But I thought on the ball, he, he looked a lot better. I've been disappointed with him lately. And I thought he looked a lot better trying to, obviously, going back against Old Club. He was making some good moral in runs forward. But we still didn't look right. The balance didn't look right wasn't sure where anyone should be. And as I say, I just felt there was there was these big gaps as well between the defence and midfield at times when our moves broke down. And yeah, it, it felt like the first goal was going to be big and unfortunately they got it. Yeah, and there, even before that, there were a few telling moments where the ball from the right-hand side flicked on. I think it was Naismith at the far post who chested down and mm. I thought he was going to drive it across goal, but he didn't. Travers managed to save 
with his feet. And then came the goal, Jeff, where a cross came in. I think it was Bradley glanced it on for Luton. And I think it was Adebayo with the with the sort of slide rule pass or attempted uh, sort of shot towards the far stick, which Travis saved and came off Kelly. I mean, just our luck, eh? Yeah, I mean, it, it it was unfortunate for Kelly. I think I think the critical part of that that move is that Stacey gets caught ball watching a bit and loses track of Adebayo behind him. Just gets sucked in, thinking that the Luton player, who, who I think it was the centre half who who sort of flicks it on, was going to miss it. And um, yeah, you know, it all went it all went downhill from when when he's out of position. Uh, great save from Trav, but. Um, Kelly, what's that? What are the chances of scoring an own goal in both games against the same opponent? I mean, it's like really yeah. unfortunate. And it was that man, Adebayo, again. I can't remember his um, full name. In fact, um, I might ask Alexa. Alexa, what's the full name of Luton's Adebayo? Here's something I found on the web. According to wikipedia.org, Elijah Anua Luwapo Oluwe Farami Oluwatomi Oluwalana Ioma Kulhin Adebayo born the 7th of January 1998, is an English professional footballer who plays for Luton Town as a forward. Did that answer your question? Not really. That's a hell of a long... That's a hell of a long name. Um, That's all from the second look today. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate that. (laughs) Um, You know, he was the one that skied that shot at Dean Court. Mm. And uh, we... we, 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 But I thought he, he was quite a menace for them. I thought he was quite a menace, and it was a great save by Travis. But it was put into a into a space that maybe he could have cleared it elsewhere. I'm not too sure. But Kelly, like, fairly unlucky with that. But you know, defensively, we looked a bit of a shambles. Stacey looked out of position as well. And one of these things that you spoke to uh, spoke about Stacey before Tom mm. in the great getting forward, but sometimes defensively frail. Yeah, it's it's a real shame because I think you know, as I say, we'll come on to to other parts of the game, but. Jack Stacey's been off it lately. I actually thought he played better, but then the glaring thing is he he, he is at fault for that goal being caught out. And sometimes I do feel he gets caught out a little bit, um, which is which is a shame. And sometimes I feel like he's he's told to sit back a little bit more. And you can tell Parker's trying to make him not bomb on. And because when he does, he's good, but then he gets caught. It's yeah, catch twenty two for him sometimes. But that was a shame for the goal. And and like you say, I thought Adebayo was a menace. He was in the home game. He just couldn't hit a barn door. But um, he scored, he's in double figures this season, so he's obviously a decent striker. And yeah, I thought he caused problems throughout. I want to talk about Lewis Cook, Jeff. Um, I don't know. (laughs) I'm finding watching him really frustrating at the moment. And we've got this visual view of Lewis Cook that I think swayed a lot by some of his early performances, even his performances for Leeds. But, but, you know, some of his showings for us in the early days were quite good. Yeah, I mean, of course, he's had, you know, his injuries, which haven't been great, but he's he's not the same player. And uh, Tom talks about the way that Parker sort of hangs his hat on certain players. I'm not sure you can on Lewis Kirk. I cannot see how he's getting in on merit ahead of Kilkenny into that team. And right. we missed that combination. I think the defensive frailties that we had are a lot to do with the the way that the midfield functioned in front of the back four as well. Uh, that first half, we were nowhere near any of those second balls. So if, they, if they're if they keeping keeping uh, the ball pumped up to Adebayo and Jerome, who are both, you know, good in the air, big physical players, and then they're picking up the second balls with their midfielders, which they were doing all the time, you're going to be under pressure. And you needed the midfield to be much more resilient and much more um, aware of what was going on. And their second goal, I mean, what what is it? Both Cook and Lerma just totally lost track of the guy. He just, he just, it was a simple run off the back of both of them. I don't yeah. know who was going to be picking him up, but honestly. And, um, you know? No, I mean, even, even between that, they scored that goal that was disallowed. And it was obviously, yeah. but I mean... You know, they obviously thought it was offside, but it was only a shade offside in like in the um, end. It, I mean, that that's when the Luton player there just, I mean, he finds Campbell. And if you're drawing out the line, it probably, you know, puts his whole foot there. But it wasn't that much at all, I've got to say. I think perhaps the conversation between the lino and the ref was who does it come off? Because, it, you know, it kind of looks like it might have come off Kelly or or Jay Nancy, but it was the Luton player and it found Campbell who... And at that stage, Tom, I, I mean... 2-0 was probably an accurate reflection, even though it didn't actually reach 2-0 at that point. 
it yeah. was probably an accurate sort of reflection of how much they were on top, and they really were. Yeah, they done what later in the game we didn't do, and they they took advantage of of getting that goal, and they really kicked on from there. And yeah, it was. I, I remember looking at my phone and thinking I was miles offside. That was a good decision. But I looked back at it, I didn't realise how close Mark Ondes was. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's tighter, but right decision in the end, to be fair. And yeah, they, they kicked off from that first goal, like I say, and they they looked a dangerous team and I wanted half-time. Um, not just for a pint, I, I wanted half-time because we were under it a little bit. Um, and yeah, and I agree, just going back on Jeff's point, with um, with Lewis as well, I, I'm not sure what he is. I'm not sure what he is. He's, he's not a defensive midfield player. He doesn't do what Lerma does, doesn't do what Ben Pearson does. He's definitely not an attacking midfield player. He's not really box to box. So he doesn't create much. But I mean, we talk about his creative midfielder. He doesn't really get assists. Doesn't get goals. And yeah, the expectations are probably a little bit too high on him because of you know the hype when we signed him and injuries have played a massive part. But Scott Parker's got to find the right position for him in that midfield or not play him because Kilkenny must be scratching his head. And Ben Pearson had a lot of opportunities this season either. And I think both should be ahead of him, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, as you say, mate, we got away with that one. But um, yeah. Didn't take long for him to get that second anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of their offsides that was just mentioned just there, I mean, Luton had 10 offsides. We we were only a caught offside once, which perhaps tells its own story, Jeff, in terms of just the intensity of Luton. Yeah, yeah. They 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 had a game plan and uh, Adebayo and Jerome, big, big guys up front, winning a lot of balls in the air. Uh, lots of second balls, but also they were looking for that angled ball over the top of our fullbacks quite a lot, playing on the edge of our line, our back four. And uh, we were fortunate on some of those offsides to get the decision, I thought. And like you said, you know, the offside goal was in real time. It looked clearly offside, but actually, if if, if far's there, that's that's millimetres. And, and we were fortunate, but we didn't really seem to be able to address it. And if I've got a criticism of Scotty, it would be don't wait until half time. Sort it out during the half when things are going wrong. You know, can you not address it so that we don't mm. have to wait until an interval of fifteen minutes to get the point over to the players that they need to be doing things differently? Mm. And as Tom said, it it wasn't long before that second goal for Luton, the actual second goal. And I want to just look at this screenshot, Tom. I mean, look at the amount of space between Cahill. And Lloyd Kelly there. It's absolutely huge. Lerma's quite advanced. I don't think he should be that far advanced, but it was a simple ball through the middle. He had a pocket of space and he had he had time to make a cup of tea almost, but he just he just then used Kelly as a shield and then fired the goal into the corner there. I mean, as you can see, he fired it into the bottom left-hand corner. So Mark Travers was pretty much unsighted until the last minute. I mean, he had time to set himself up. Worldy of a strike, but the space between Kelly and Cahill initially, whilst it's closed there, kind of worrying. We do switch off at times, don't we? Yeah, I think the, the space between the two centre-halves is is poor there. I also think Lerma could probably be a little bit deeper. And then Lewis Cook, for some reason, goes to press the ball when he doesn't need to press the ball. Mm. Um, he kind of charges up like he, you know, he kind of gets caught and just thinks, oh, I'll just go and try and press the ball. And then it makes the gap even bigger for them to find the man. And yeah, it was, uh, we looked a little bit open in that in that phase and it was worrying like you say a really good strike though to be fair to the lad but yeah it was probably no less than they deserved you know they nearly got one moments before and they they doubled their lead and it's kind of reflective of the of the way the half went really and yeah we just looked all over the place and I remember saying at half time he ain't I don't I, I my worry my frustration is I felt we're two nil down we're not playing well could have easily been free he'll probably do a like for like change and that's what he did. And it, it mm. frustrates me a little bit. I, I feel like it was evident that it was all going wrong. We're too little down. We might as well throw caution to the wind a little bit. But we went, um, yeah, we just went for a like for like. And it was later on the changes that, that helped us a little bit more. Yeah, that's right. So what were those changes again, Tom? Remind everyone at home. Well, at half time, we brought on uh, Jamal Loaf, Jay Nantley, didn't we? And kind of a yeah. like for like change. Um, and then it was later on in the game where... Super Morgan Rogers, um, come on for Lewis Cook, and that's where we changed it a little bit, moved Christie inside and tried to, you know, be a bit different in the way we were trying to break him down. At 2 0, Tom, obviously very despondent, have a beer at the concourse at half time. There's no there's no real urgency to get back up and proved to be quite profitable for you, didn't it? Yeah, it was all right. I was just finishing my my pint and they they, they do it well in terms of um kind of make making all the drinks before before you you're there so they can just grab them and um they had loads left and they just said free for all everyone crack on so i went you know what i'm gonna miss a little bit more i think um 
add another one. And then I was pleased to hear a cheer from the Bournemouth fans. So, and it's always nice to miss a goal. I only missed two though, so I saw three miss two, miss two. Not too bad. Not too bad. And look, let, you know, let's talk about that goal from Mark Ondes, Jack. Because I've got to say. You know, whilst the game is, um, you know, it'll probably live long in many a uh, Luton Town fan memory. They'll be telling their kids and grandkids and all that kind of stuff. It was definitely Maybe one of those, yeah. Is that, is that condescending? I hope so. But Jack Stacey, the ex-hatter, it did really well. And for me, that's possibly assist of the season. Yeah, it's uh, superb. I mean, he, he had quite a lot to do when he picks up the ball. But uh, yeah. beats beats Adebayo to the ball. Um, plays a really intelligent cut cut through, takes both the defender and Adebayo out of the game. And then decent cross, inviting to be headed in. And um, thank goodness it was somebody like, like Mark Ondes, obviously decent in the air as opposed to Phil Bill, because that actually goes in. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the funny thing about Phil Bill. Whilst he's got the height heading wise, and even his dad agrees with this, not not quite all there. But I think it kind of came off the defender. But it was it was Mark Ondes's goal anyway. But right place, right time, Mark Ondes. And uh, you know, Tom, you heard the cheer. You came back, and it it was a changed mentality, wasn't it? I just I just wish that mentality could have been instilled like halfway through the second half, but it wasn't. Uh, but it was good to see us up for it. And from that moment forward, it felt like there was only one team that was going to score next and, you know, proved to be the case. But we did look better, didn't we? Yeah, we looked a lot better. Um, that's, that's exactly what we need. We are two down. I'm sure Luton would be saying, don't let them score early. Don't let them score early. And we'd be saying, we need an early goal. So it was, mm. it was ideal. And suddenly the mindset completely changes then to, you know, we got the whole half here to, to nick something, you know, maybe even go on to win it. Who knows? But yeah, like you say, we're in the ascendancy. They're going to start getting a bit nervy. The crowd starts getting a bit nervy. And um, yeah, it looked really positive for a spell. And I thought, right, we're at them here. And um, I just thought it's a matter of time till we get the goal. And fortunately, we did. Hmm. Can I just talk a bit about playing out from the back? Go, go, on, for, it, go for it. Go for it. Here we go. So, box Hayward. In. So, I completely understand that you want to pass the ball through the team when you've got a, a, a bunch of skillful players like we've got. However, the reason we do it is for a purpose, right? It's for an attacking platform. And you can see that with the second goal that we score, because that starts with Travers getting a really yeah. dodgy back pass, not panicking, playing the ball wide out to his defender again. The ball gets moved forward and we cut through them like ribbons. And you just there were so few times in that game where we actually invited that press and used it to our advantage. So many times, it's almost like, we're just we're just almost in a training session trying to play keep ball rather than actually thinking what is it we are trying to do. You know we should be looking for that that longer pass that opens up the other side of the pitch, and we we barely did that in the game. And it's like Lewis Cook getting getting harassed, you know, five yards in front of the penalty area by three of their players, and you think what is going on? Where is the brains going into this? And they probably smelt blood with the fact that we were quite ponderous at the back. And when we did have the ball, you know, because we weren't making that sort of clinical pass, because you're basically trying to attract players forward, like you said, and then create space in the middle for you to then play that killer pass and make space, just like they did with their second goal. Because thought, that was a, you know, that was a hot knife through butter. And everybody who was, we were, were playing out from the back, everybody seems to want three touches of the ball. Mm. It's like, what are you doing? It's got to be moved quicker than that. Is that a confidence thing? I think it possibly is. There's a there's a distinct lack of self belief, certainly from, um, I think from Jack and from um, Leaf Davis, both not entirely confident playing this way, and it shows. Um, but the midfield as well need to work harder. And Lewis Cook again, I think you know, didn't work hard enough to create those passes inside the inside option and then spray the ball straight away. It comes to you. Hmm. And thought, when you are confident. Saying, yeah, it's true. I mean, when you are confident, you do tend to play the ball first time. And when you're not, you'll always take a touch just to make sure because you're just a bit wary of making a mistake. And I think that the second goal that we scored, we played really well. Like you said, I think it was Leif Davis was fed by Kelly mm -hmm. after Travis played it out. And then it came to Mark Condes, who, who just put it inside to Christie, who turned. I mean, I think it was slightly fortunate that it just beat the defender, but he hit it first time. And then that put in Jamal Lowe. Stacey was bombing forward yep. as that decoy. And then he sort of jinked his way and then put that ball across. And when the ball's you're coming across, Tom, you only want one man in there. 
Morgan Rogers, what a player. Yeah, no, it was a it was a great move. And I think just quickly going back onto Jeff's point and in terms of how good that goal was, I think um second half, it's all, it almost felt like we're 2 0 down. So now we'll try and make positive passes. Um mm. and first half it just felt so safe and yeah. so conservative. And I thought Kale was doing it a lot, just getting the ball and playing the most safest pass without even thinking. Um but yeah, we that one, like you say, we, we played it through the line so cleverly. I really like how Jamal Lowe was just so direct with his run as well. Um, could have easily just played it for Stacey, but use him as a decoy, really direct. And when he put it in, I looked up, saw it was Morgan Rogers. Didn't even need to look at the net. Knew he was going to hit the back of the net. I've been saying for weeks he should be. No, I haven't. Um, but no, I was actually ch- I was chuffed for him. I was chuffed for him because he keeps coming on in games, told to try and change it, told, told to try and make an impact, and it hasn't worked. So it was absolutely delighted for him to just smash it in. Hit the bar as well. So really, really pleased it, it went over the line. So, um, yeah, hopefully he can, you know, use that now. I mean, personally, I, you know, without spinning it on negative, I think it's probably going to be a similar one to a Roro Raquel made that he'll get that one goal and not really be a success. But nevertheless, he come on and done what he had to do, didn't he? Uh, what standard has he been playing at, at Man City? Is it the youth or is it the development side there or what? I mean, I'm sure they've got quite a few. Do you know? Yeah. Sort of... Who I think it's like the other twenty threes, but he was out on loan at Lincoln, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, League One done really well. Mm. But so, you know, there is a difference, though, isn't there, between cool. playing that level and then playing men's football? And mm. it is quite intimidating, I'm sure, to be playing like full throttle football. And like you say, when he's had ten minutes, I'm going to completely contradict everything I've said for the past few weeks. It is hard for him uh, yeah. because he feels as though he needs to do so much in in like so little time and. He's going to make mistakes and you kind of feel, um, you know, like that match against Yeovil in the FA Cup was was the, the superb showcase for him to do yeah. what he needs to do. But it didn't really happen. But maybe it's a confidence thing. And, you know, you can probably see why that goal could help him. I mean, I'd like to see more of him, but it's just, you know, taking on a man. Can you do that? Are you, are you managing to pass to a shirt with the same colour that you're wearing. These are all things that we've been spotting that he hasn't been doing. Um, it could be a springboard, Jeff. It could be. It could be. It could be. I hope so. I just I just struggle to see how he can get in the starting lineup without players being injury in, injured or unavailable. He's, he's always going to be coming off the bench, I think, in this current setup we've got. And certainly, if I was Jamal Lowe, I'd think, I'm starting ahead of Jaden Anthony next game because I because he played so so much better. It was yeah. so different what he offered us, and I don't know what's happened to Jaden. But the last sort of probably since about um, would you say maybe the Reading game where he he last was really good. I mean he's been he's been noticeable for defensive work rather than attacking work. And sometimes that hasn't been great, has it? But do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. weird how he's sort of fallen off a cliff. I think it's Ahmed Schubel on Twitter wrote um, yesterday, I think. He said, through Billings, Zamora and Anthony, AFC Bournemouth attack most often down the left flank in the championship, 42%. And that left side is crucial. In in a way, the right side, it, it doesn't really matter who's playing on the right side because everything's down the left. And when there are vital cogs missing, then, you know, either physically or just in the game themselves, because Anthony was missing. But maybe Anthony was missing because, you know, Phil Billip, actually was literally missing and wasn't, you know, available. Um, Jordan mm. Zamora, of course, wasn't yeah, there. Maybe. It just seemed to be completely, um, completely not at it, I've got to say. And you're probably right. Why not play someone else? I mean, what would you be doing, Tom? Would you be giving Roger, uh, Rogers a go or Jamal Lowe from the left or what? Uh, Jamal Lowe, definitely. I think yeah. um, I think it's it's no coincidence that I think since Zamora got his injury and now he's at AFCON, that um, Anthony hasn't been as good without his mate behind him. It hasn't worked at all. Um, really struggled and yeah and billing probably affects that as well in them triangles but yeah he, he hasn't been on it I, I kind of feel like he, he raised the bar so high at the start of the season I don't think any of us expected Anthony to be as, as good as he was um, and now he's playing like I expect him to play and that's a young raw talent that's going to be very inconsistent mm. and, and I feel we're getting that now and maybe we were blinded by how well he started the season um, and I think we're the fact that he seems to be one of the first names in the team surprised me. I think he needs to come out, come in and things. And yeah, I, I would, I like Jamal Lowe. I think Jamal Lowe's got a goal for it. Um, don't get me wrong. I think all of his better performances have been off the bench. He seems to be a good impact player. So maybe that plays into to Scott's thoughts. But uh, he's, he's only right to get a start for me. And especially with 
with Zamora not here, I think, um, I mean, he'll be back soon, to be fair, they're out. But I, I, Jane Anthony doesn't look right. I think maybe just, just cut the games out of the team yeah. and just to reset a little bit. Because I think we've got to not be too critical because I think a player like Jane Anthony is going to be, it would be mad if, if he was really consistent, then he'd be gone because he's he's a young, raw talent, as I say. So I think we've got to accept a bit of this. But when it happens, I I, I think he's played too many minutes during a, during a really bad time. The junior status has injury hasn't helped because I yeah. think Junior, mm-hmm. yeah. if he had never got that injury, I think Junior's back in the team, you know. Um, but yeah, I like Jaden, but I think he's just he's just been a bit too up and down of late. And yeah, it ties him with a few injuries. But it was the right change at half time, even though it was like for like, and I would have liked to I want to see Jamal a little bit a little bit more central at times, a little bit closer to Dom. Mm-hmm. But um, because as we mentioned, Dom ridiculously isolated, and without looking at the stats, he must have been one of the players with the fewest passes, fewest touches. Yeah, Dom Solanke, because he, he barely got the ball. Mm. Now, Luton were, I mean, you know, they were going for it, but I mean, they had a shot from Jordan Clark. I think he collected a ball over the top and he hit it almost first time, hit it immediately, palmed over by Travis. But then by the end, Jeff, it felt sort of like kitchen sink time a little bit for Luton. I mean, there were penalty shouts, balls into the box. And after a bit of a melee, then, I mean, stunning, stunning strike from Naismith. He sort of dummy to shoot, yeah. sent sent Lerma on one and then picked the only spot he could and a cracking strike. There were players on the pitch, management on the pitch, uh, goalkeepers running up the pitch, fans on the pitch in the corner. Quite a moment at Kenilworth Road. It was quite a moment. I, I think several things I want to say about Luton. I think their midfield was outstanding all game. I thought Clark was excellent. And uh, Naismith, obviously, with his goal and his shot in the first half was good and, and Campbell was good as well. But um, I thought Jordan Clark really held them together very, very well. And there was a moment where we had a break just before they scored. And, mm. and he, we've got two players chasing him down. He just brought the ball under control and turned and took us took them both out of the game. And it was, it was just great to watch that sort of football. Um, their midfield was on it and ours wasn't. And I think that was the difference over the entire game as, as to what went on. Because after we scored, we sort of lost a bit of impetus, bizarrely. I mean, they, they were doing a bit of time wasting, but they broke up the play, broke up our momentum, came at us really strong again. And that goal was a peach for finish. Can't say we didn't try. And, it. You know, it was the only it was- place you could have it. We, we were throwing bodies in the way, you know, Jeff got taken out of the game as he threw himself in the way and he dummied him. And look how many players we've got trying to block that ball. Mm. It was in, he killed it around the right hand side of Stacey as you're looking at it. I mean, what you know, hell of a finish. Um, it was Travis super- had players in his way and he he used them as a shield yet again. But what a strike! Great, strike. it was, it was, and and we all know what it feels like to to score that 97th minute winner. It's an ecstatic feeling in football. Yeah. When you come back into a game and you, you you're sort of two 0 down, come back to two two, you think you're going to be the side that does that sort of thing. Um, and I genuinely thought we got a chance. If we get one more chance, we could win this. But want to be that's football. It happens. <sighs> On balance, they they probably they probably deserve the win. I mean, what, our mentality at two all, Tom. Surely to God. It's to go and get a, th- a third. But did you say that you picked up on a soundbite from Scott Parker after the game that sort of said that we just held back a little bit or something like that? Um, I think he mentioned, I can't remember if it was um, Jacob Townswell reporting on it, just kind of said that 2-2, he told him to take a breath. Um, hmm. I don't know how you want to, which way you want to look at that. But um, kind of, you know, not be gung ho and calm down. Let's not go all out for the third. That's what it feels like for me. I can't get my head around the fact that a mid-table side, don't get me wrong, good side, in Luton, um, we're two 0 up against a promotion side, and they get pegged back to two two. But then they're the team on top. I don't know how that works. We should have the ascendancy. We should have the momentum. They should be a team going. Don't lose it now. Hmm. Um, I, I can't get me around it at all. Whether it was the players on the pitch or it was a tactical thing, I don't know. But I just, as soon as Roger scored, I thought that's it. Now it's only one team that can win this. And um, worst case would be a draw. But they earned it, and they they were the ones who put the pressure on. We were the ones that went. Oh no, six minutes added. Um, and that says it all. Really, yeah, really strange. It just felt like the game was there. Um, you know, the crowd were, were down and we could have had them. But it just it just didn't materialise whatsoever. And um, only one team looked like they were going to win it. And they did. And yeah, they all went on the pitch, stuff like that. But I suppose, you know, they just won a 97th minute blooming winner against a team in the top two. So, you know, fair play to them. Um, yeah, re- really strange one, mate. I just can't. 
yeah, I, I, as I say, I just can't get my head around how that game just switched for no real reason um, and back into their favour. Credit to them, but um, I just don't think we done done the right things at all. It worries me. And again, Ahmed Shubal on Athletic was saying that, you know, there are some really fine margins with this AFC ball this side. Just one or two players missing, Jeff, and it seems to all go to pot. And uh, you know what, Philip Billing, we spoke about him before, even last week, and he's he's a player that's just crucial to us. And whenever he's missing now, I'm starting to crap my pants a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I completely get that. Um I think we struggle to impose our authority on games. You know, it's all it's all well and good having 60, 70% possession, which I think we probably did have again on, on Saturday. Mm. But you've got to do something with it. You've got to have play with purpose, owning the ball with purpose, which I've talked about before. And and you've got to you've got to let other sides know that you're better than they are. And I mm. just thought after that after that goal that we scored and if we did ease back, you know, that's the time when you need to show them that you're top of the league, not sort of think, oh, well, we're happy with the point, you know, come back on to us, which is what, what it seems that we did. And I think, I think you're right. There are, there are key cogs in this wheel that we underestimate their value to the team. Um, thank goodness Zimbabwe are, gonna, are out of the AFCON and that Zimbabwe will be back. Um, sorry, Zimbabwe, but you know that he's really important on that left hand side. Phil Bill, he's got to get well soon because we need him. Mm. I was I was thinking back to um, kind of how I'm feeling now about watching the team and, and thinking back to last season, and there's too many similarities. I was, I was thinking about it and I was thinking we seem to so there's been a, a lot of games this season, as you say, fine margins, and Dom Slanky, bit of magic, got us out of jail. Exactly the same as Dan Juma last season. Um, so many games where we could have got beat by more, or you know he saved us. Mark Travers, exactly the same as Begovic last season. We've got one of the best squads in the league by a mile, exactly as we did last season. But we're conservative, we're safe, we we we, we don't go for teams, even though we've got one of them best squads. There's, there's a lot of similarities, in my opinion. It's, it's quite tedious to watch at times. Um, I'd probably the positives are. One, the academy and the young players we've brought through and the fact that they've been better than we expected. And also the fact that I think the league's poorer. I think last season mm-hmm. you had Norwich were brilliant. Watford were, were hard to beat. Brentford were good. Swansea were a lot better. This season, I mean, we're blimmin' lucky. We went, you know, one get one win in eight and we still remain in the top two. Um, I, think we're, I think we're very fortunate. But for me, it was Dan Juma magic and Begovic keeping us in games. And at the moment... I feel it's very, very similar. Travers again kept the score down. At Middlesbrough, he yeah. kept the score down. He's making great saves every week. And as, as much as you want that from your goalkeeper, it means you're under the cost too much. And yeah, there's there's too many worrying comparisons for me on last season where obviously in the end, we fell short. So I still think we'll do a few bits in the window and um, and hopefully we'll have a bit of an edge this time because the league's not as strong and maybe Blackburn can have a blip. I think that's our best chance. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, Jeff, our central defensive partnership, I I think we were reading the player ratings from Jacob Townswell in the pub, Tom, and Cahill got a four and, uh, you know, it wasn't his finest game for AFC Bournemouth, was it? Do you think he's just being played too much? Is is he just not coping physically? Because he, he just seemed to be off the boil. He was off the boil, and I, I, I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure whether it's that combination of the back four. You know, they're just sort of one one piece of that jigsaw not there, um, or not playing well, and they they all sort of fall apart. They did get put under a lot of pressure, and I thought playing two big guys up front is something different that not a lot of teams do against us. They might play one big guy up front against us, but two. Mm caused a lot of issues for both um both Cahill and Kelly. Yeah. And then I don't think he's been quite they as good were peeling off to the full backs as well. I was only gonna say I can't remember what game it was and he got a knock, didn't he? And then he was out for a game and then he wasn't as bad as we thought. Yeah I that was Mill will win. That's it. I don't think he's quite looked back since then. And I wonder, you know, he is that bit older. I wonder if it's taken him out of him. But he's been great for us, but it was definitely his poorest game. Um along with the Middlesbrough game he was poor. Um, up on Twitter, he's gone from a Rolls Royce to an unreliant Robin, hasn't he? I don't, I don't, mm. I don't know how it's changed so much. He's he was absolutely unbelievable, but 
That's another thing where yeah, they did that's that centre half pairing. It's got to be one. Of, it's got to be the best in the league on paper. Mm-hmm. It's got to be. And how do, and how do Adebayo and Cameron Jerome, with all due respect, bully them because that's mm-hmm. what they did. And uh, as Jeff mentioned, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Few few key players out. The midfield in front of them didn't play well, and it, it just just everything affects the whole team. Even up the front end of the pitch, where where Don won't get anything, it works its way back and affects the whole team. And another away game where I thought. Travers man of the match. He's mm. he's probably he's getting too many man of the matches for my liking. And I think the big difference with the way Luton played to the way we played was that they they went for it. You know, they played with with passion and intensity because they believed they could win and turn us over. You know, they absolutely believe that. And we did that for about that 20 minute spell in the second half. And when we stopped and they didn't, they came back into it and they, you know, credit to them. I thought if you want a blueprint of how to beat us, they, they had it, which is, you know, we all know that we all know the games we've lost this season have been the games where we concede that momentum. We back off, we let teams bully us happened again. I always like to hear Neil Dawson's opinion and we've got it in words and on the vitals forum, he, he wrote about it saying my worry is passion and hunger. Even when we were on our winning run, it was through control and movement and not outright desire. When teams get at us, we disappear and we don't hunt teams down like Luton did to us. It's all a bit pretty and we stroll about and dirty work is what the lesser players do, not us. Obviously, I don't include Lerma in this assessment. He went on to say that the first half we were out for and didn't lay a glove or look bothered by it. Second half, we had our period of control like earlier in the season and we looked good. Normally, if a team comes back from two down, they go on to win it if there's a, a deciding goal. But we stopped. They fought to get the decider and we hardly had a kick. It was basically one team wanted it more. I think he sums that up quite well, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, perfectly. Um, I think when he said out for, I, I also say out fought. I think out for and out fought. I think is, mm. is a good way of good way of looking at it. And and yeah, there's there's sometimes in games where I think, well, there were two players that I always felt would give you that, and that's Ben Pearson and Gavin Kilkenny, and how one of them's not on the pitch yeah. at times like that. And if we are gonna, you know, maybe try and settle for the draw, you know, which I don't agree with, but if we are gonna do that, then why are we not bringing Pearson on, uh, you know, to help with that? I, didn't really get it. But yeah, I, I agree with Neil. I think a lot in the start of the season, I think a lot of teams were probably showing us a bit of respect. I think they got good players here. And so we were getting through games because of that and controlling them. And of late, I think teams have worked out. If you have a bit of a go, rough them up a little bit. Bournemouth can be got at. And uh, as Jeff said, Luton, Luton was a good blue, blueprint for that. And I think a lot of teams will do that now. So yeah, we're going to have to react. We'll have to change a few a few bits very quickly. And um, as I said, I don't know whether that's through the window or through tactics who, or different personnel, different shape. I'm not sure, but we've got to change some. Hmm. If you're looking for a, a striker to to uh, come in and support Solanke, add a bio. Yeah, good shout. Speaking of transfers, it's all it's all seemingly a bit dead. Uh, so there's no there's no show from us uh, this week on any on any potential lowdowns because there's no sort of you know, connections that are sort of really going on. But if you're, if you're looking at players that have been sort of touted on Twitter, Tom, you've, you've heard the names of like John Swift before and Lawrence. I think, you know, someone that needs to step into the shoes of Dom Solanke in case the worst happened. Because if Dom gets injured, that's it, mate. We're not going up. No chance. Yeah. So we need someone. Yeah, of course. And I think John Swift and Tom Lawrence are, are quite obvious links in the sense that they're both in muddy problems, both clubs. And it would probably be it'd be hard for them to to not accept a, a decent bid with them both coming to the end of their contract. Uh, both good players, and yeah, I think that don't get me wrong, I totally agree. If Don were to get injured, we're we're stuffed. But I think I just want someone closer to him. I, I feel for him. Mm. I don't think anyone gets close enough. And without Billing, who does try and get close to him, it was just he's so isolated. It's unreal. Um, I'd like to see maybe Lowe giving a chance a, a little bit closer. But yeah, I, I don't know whether he's going to go for a if we're going to go for a loan. Shane Long, uh, Shane Long S signing. Um, I think we'll do a bit. I, I do think we'll get another body in, but um, yeah, well, I think Tom Lawrence makes sense now, especially with Junior's injury. Um, a player that could play off the sides can also yeah. play in the hole. A bit like Christie, maybe on the other side. And as we say, Jane Anthony's not been not been on it lately, so someone to put him under pressure. And and yeah, but there's like you say, it's gone a little bit quiet. 
I don't expect anyone of note to go out now. So hopefully, hopefully a couple of incomings. I'd like a striker and a and a kind of attacking midfield player, but I'd probably I'd probably accept just Tom Lawrence. Actually, I think that would be a be a good bit mm. of business. Uh, there's a few positives to come out of that game. We did show some fight. You can look at it and say that if it wasn't for the goal, literally the penultimate kick of the game, we'd be talking mainly, Jeff, about how good a comeback it was. And we'd be talking about how Scott Parker turned it around. Just But for, but for one moment, we're now feeling really negative about it. I thought Ryan Christie thought when he came inside, when set, when playing central, I thought he was actually fairly better. I've, I've always said that he is better on that right-hand side, but I thought he did well. Travers again, as Tom said, um, you know, some good saves, commands his area quite well. Mark Condes sort of drifts in and out, but right place, right time. Leif Davis, I thought, did all right. He's he's no Zamora, but he certainly did well. But I'd like to see, you know, the likes of Ethan Laird and James Hill, you know, coming into the... Well, I, I mean, obviously on that left-hand side, maybe not, but I would like to see more players, you know, fit and available to be you know, testing the likes of, you know, Jack Stacey and hopefully Zamora will hit the ground running when he's back. Lowe did okay as well, you know, putting pressure on Anthony. It's... um. It's imperative that we start clicking into gear, into gear, pretty yeah. pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you look at the fixtures coming up. This this is where we've got to get points. We've got to we've got to put some results together, put some performances together, so that when it does come around to April, we're in a much better, stronger position, and we're going to be going to teams who think that they can beat us, you know, game after game. You know that mm. that run is is intimidating. And if we're not in a good place by the time we get there, you know, we might be scraping into the playoffs again. You know, crikey, I don't, I don't want that. And no. you know, we 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 ought to be performing better. So I think let's let's get some new blood into the the team. I think you're right. I think Ethan Laird is probably going to be getting a start ahead of Jack Stacey when he's fit. And I think Jamal Lowe needs to start instead of Jaden Anthony. Kilkenny needs to start instead of Lewis yeah. and let's get back to playing front foot aggressive football because we know that when we do that and create spaces we score goals and we can win games I know it's not as simple as what's on paper but I'll tell you what if you could pick out two fixtures you'd want Hull and Barnsley Barnsley yeah. are below Derby who had minus God knows what um, so Batten and Hull lost again and they're, they're two unbelievable fixtures for us coming up so Go get six points. We've got to be convincing, a bit like we were against Cardiff in our last home game. And uh, hopefully, you know, that could just dust the cobwebs off a little bit. Two back-to-back -back wins and then we yeah. can really kick on. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. And as you say, a bit of new blood coming in. You know, it'll, it'll turn. It's the championship. It'll be ups and downs. We'll be delighted one week and we'll be like this again. But um, we've just got to be, <sighs> be a little bit more consistent than Blackburn and, and hopefully we'll be all right. Yeah. I mean, that's then four wins out of five. And then we look at those set of five games, you think, oh, you know what? You know, fair play. I'd have taken that. Um Anyway, because we probably wouldn't have, I don't know, at QPR, given our form, we'd, we'd have been excused for thinking that we've lost that even before we kicked a ball. So maybe four wins out of five is OK. Here's what you had to say, both outside the ground and the messages that have come in via Telegram as well. Kelvin, I'm disappointed, wasn't it? Devastating. Devastating. Come back, come out the second half, different side, playing the ball round, absolutely brilliant. Jamal Lowe, Morgan, and then, yeah, yeah sucker Morgan, blow. Yeah. Sucker punch, mate. Like a knife through the heart. It was a game of two halves until that last moment, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they wanted it more than us, to be, to be fair. Yeah, I think they deserved to win, to be honest with you. Yeah. It felt like a sort of FA Cup tie for the first half. They were properly on it, weren't they? And they we just were just there. outplaying us in so many departments. We weren't there in the first half. And then in the second half, he's obviously had a word with them. We've come out a different side. We're pressing more. He's made a good substitution in, in, in bringing Morgan Rogers on. Finally got a goal. You know, and it's there for the point. But unfortunately, they've scored a goal right at the death in the seventh minute of six minutes of extra time. So, you know, but onwards and upwards. I think two all, I yeah, think two yeah. all, I would have been happy with two all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, but take a point, away point is, is a point to point, isn't it? And that was the last kick of the game. It's the only place he could have possibly put it. And he found that it was bottom a great corner. Finish, mate. It was you a can't great finish. deny that goal. No, what a goal. Like that. You know, but the way they celebrate, it was like they just won the World Cup. I think we played well second half, but you're right. We've lost. We lost it in the first half. Like, 
but I think we did well to come back to 2-2. Two -two. I know lots of people criticising Parker for being defensive, but I didn't really notice it. Like I don't know. I feel like we did okay second mm. half, but we played we've played worse this season. I mean, the Hull, it was a yeah, draw yeah. away. Peterborough away a draw. They showed spirit in the second half. So actually, we can always lose one in the last minute. So I'm not too disheartened. I think the second half performance was good. Why do you think we were so off it in the first half? Because yeah, I have no idea. Like it was the worst I've seen us play. Not much at home, but a lot away this season. And it was the worst away first half performance I've seen. Luton won it. They were up for it. I thought the crowd was good. Yeah, uh, they were they it, yeah. like uh, they emphasised it. You know, we're top of the league. We're always we're now a scalp. Uh, so. I don't know, we were just totally off at the first half, so... I think we missed out on Jay-Z because of his pace and the way we get forward for... Uh, I think we shouldn't have played Lewis Cook because he played poorly. We should have played Gavin Kilkenny instead. And my man in the match was uh, Jack Stacey because that is just that he done for Emiliano Marcondes was really good. At the cherries. If you would have told me when we... When we uh tied it up 2-2 two -two. you're thinking hey at the half would you have taken that yeah but then again we shouldn't have been in that situation to begin with in the first yeah. half it was just like you know my old theory about chaos in the box scores and two of their three goals yeah. were chaos in the box you probably had so, a good gauge of how the Luton fans were feeling yeah I won't they, say where you were sat but you were relatively near them they, stroke in amongst a them bit. a little bit yeah and they were they were uh, second half they were like just hold on just everybody just hold yeah. on because they knew they were paying, playing passive in the second half mm. but they were just like like, oh, we just need to, if we can just hold on, we can get at least to get a tie. And then at the end, it was like, it was, yeah. Because they were, because they were, you know, they were just, you could tell they were waiting for us to score the third goal yeah. in the end. Because they felt fortunate to be up 2-0. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just couldn't, couldn't get it done at the end. The first half, AFC Bournemouth were very, very bad. It was um, not... I don't think we meant to be. I think Luton were just set up the right way. Um, Jack Stacey didn't have much of the ball. Um, all the attack and play was coming from the left-hand side. Um, and Davis not very often got beyond um, their full-back or whatever. And um, yeah, obviously we went 1-0 down from Lloyd Caddy's own goal. Uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. It happens sometimes in football. You put the wrong ball into the wrong net. And then, uh, <clears throat> obviously, the um, goal, it was offside. I actually went, uh, I did a bit of a Tom Jordan. I went down at 35. Um, well, went to the fridge to go and get another drink and go to uh, nip to the facilities. Um, and then I came back and then, like, it literally just scored the second. I was like, oh, my God. Um, but anyway, that that was... First time I've done that, so maybe I won't do it again. Um, and then, um, in terms of getting back into it, I thought we did okay. Like, for me, Lewis Cook should have come off. Uh, Gav Kilkenny or Ben Pearson, I think they should have come on. I was thinking more Pearson in the, at two all, uh, just to make it defensive and then we'll counter-attack them because we're better at that. Um, but that didn't happen. And when Rogers came on, I thought, I even put on Twitter, like, oh, what are we doing? And then I like, I eat my words because he came on with his first touch and got us back into the game. And that looked like we were going to get a point at the least. Very frustrating. Um, it is what it is. Um, whole net Saturday um, and then uh, on to Barnsley uh, the week after. So got a few games coming up. Hopefully get six points. Uh, up the cherries and I will see you all soon. So superb to have some opinions from some cherries fans there. And yeah, we move on then. Jeff and it's Hull at home it has to be three points has to be 100 percent has to be three points has to be a great performance we have to bang in a, a number of goals and win clearly and convincingly 6-1 would we do uh would do nicely wouldn't it Tom yeah that'd be all right I enjoyed that one I, I we was speaking about that yesterday weren't we it was a um it was a nice one Matt I, I remember some good goals in that game and uh yeah that was a really enjoyable one we got a decent record so yeah hopefully and as Jeff said, I want, I want to convince the performance as well. I mean, win priority, but I want to see us really controlling games against, you know, teams like Hull. I've just done it, haven't I? Oh, you've um, done it. Love it. Done it. I didn't mean yeah. it like that, but you know what I mean, their position in the league. Um, we should be controlling the game, putting, you know, stamping our authority on it and, and having too much quality for them. And yeah, scoring a, scoring a few goals and keeping the door shut the other end. I'm still, I'm still confident we'll be all right. 
Love it. Love it. Thanks for all the comments that have been coming in today. Really appreciate it um, during the show. And also, if you've got a comment, if you're watching back, put them in the comments below and we will read it. I, I usually say this to Tom, but Jeff, you know, what should people be doing on this channel if they like this video? What should they be doing? I mean, they've got to subscribe, haven't they? Haven't they? <laughs> they got to. Also, like the video as well, because that really helps. Oh, yeah. Superb stuff. Thanks for watching. Really pre appreciate it, Tom. Cheers, Cheers as boss. ever. Thank you very Temping much. Temping bowling tomorrow, mate. Hope you're going to strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, bit of bowling tomorrow, mate. Yeah, just um, just just take a bit of anger out on their balls, I think. So, yeah, looking forward to that, mate. Have you got a special technique? Do you, like, curl it or anything? Have you got your special gloves or anything like that? Just happy if I can lift the thing up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, cheers. Can I... It's all right to admit this is pre-recorded, right? Of course. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so I'm letting off some steam tonight. Go and see Idols at Brixton Academy. Oh, oh nice. Nice. What time are you leaving? You're going to have to sort of... Yeah, probably about six o'clock. So, yeah. Oh, not too bad. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy, I mate. Will. And oh, hope you enjoyed that as well. Myself and Tom will be sharing a bit. No, we'll have, we'll have a pint each. And we'll be doing an away day review of Luton because, look, there's some very positive comments that are coming out of that trip from Kenilworth Road. Not so much the view, but where's it going to go on that tier list? Myself and Tom will be discussing that. That's the next video on this channel. So make sure you press that button. That bell will notify you of when the video is released. Other the cherries. See you in the next one.